Welcome to part two of uh, the blood tutorial. And in this uh, chapter, we're gonna tackle the uh, in game setups that you need to do and also the basic uh, speak tech. And we're gonna learn a lot about those. So, first of all, you wanna go into options, uh, game setup, and here at the bottom, you're gonna find version 1.0x weapons balance. Make sure this is turned off because, uh, well, basically, uh, it changes the weapon balance of the game. So you have no, let's say, uh, alternate fire on the life leech. Voodoo doll works differently. So, and uh, it is basically a general truth that the uh, newest uh, patch is weapon balance is the quickest version of running the game. All right, next up. Uh, what else is there? If you hit the tilde key, um, unfortunately, the game by default, and you cannot change it, quick saving and quick loading is put on your F6 and F9 keys, and you cannot change those, unfortunately. But. Thank you, Caleb. But, if you open up the console and. You type, let's say, I have it on T myself. If you type bind T quick load, goddamn Caleb, this is just interrupting me all the time. Uh, you can basically by using quick load and quick save. So bind, uh, let's say, whatever key T is what I use, quick load, you can just quick load by using T, and I use mouse forward for quick saving, if you use mouse forward quick save, now I hit mouse forward, it's gonna open this up. And one more thing about quick saving is when you start up the game, uh, important bit, so you don't get caught up like in the middle of a, an attempt of a run, so if you hit your quick save key, basically when you start up the game, you should make a quick save. Uh, and the reason why is because you enter this menu every time you boot up the game and you make a quick save. So just make the quick save. And from here on out, you just have this blinking menu, basically. Instead of having to do the menuing and having to do multiple inputs. And it's kind of bad. I've been caught up before in the middle of a run that I haven't quick saved yet, and it was uh, unfortunate. Anyway, uh, one more thing. Uh, where is it? Control, mouse setup. This is not necessary, but it's good getting used to early on. And if you want to get, if you're shooting for top times, then this is absolutely necessary, in my opinion, to shave off every millisecond that you can. And this is the fact that you can bind your mouse wheel to anything. And one important bind you can make to your mouse wheel is the open button. So basically opening doors. And this is most useful for ending the levels of games. Uh, well, not for opening doors, but... The important bit is uh, when you end levels, uh, if you spam your mouse wheel, of course, well, naturally you're gonna hit the, uh, the end level earlier. Important thing though is that so, for example, here is an end level. Important bit though is uh, if you keep scrolling, nothing happens. So, better have a bind, uh, which is by default E is the open key, so leave that on definitely. And with the combination of the two, you can immediately basically just end levels like the intermission screen is just a blink, like that. And basically that's all the end game setting up that you need. Um, the rest you can set to your liking, your resolution, your FOV, widescreen or not, rise and line, stuff like that. One more thing, if you want to record ILs, uh, you have to have level stats on, which is here uh, in the bottom left of the screen. Make sure that is on when you record ILs, because that's how we verify our runs. But anyway, that's all. Let's get into the speed tech. So first, let's tackle SR40, uh, which is basically holding a strafe, strafe key and 
your forward or backward key and looking at a diagonal angle, like a 45 degree angle. Uh, this basically combines the uh, forward momentum uh, and the strafe momentum, which makes us go run roughly 40% faster. And here I'm going to make a quick demonstration. So I'm going to start running from this wall at 40 seconds. And let's see how I reach the wall on the other end. And what time? Almost 5 seconds. So let's do this with SR40 now. Here we go. Started at 50 seconds. And it took me 3.5 seconds. So with SR40 it took me 3.5 seconds to bridge this uh, distance between these two walls and almost five seconds without SR40 so I cannot stress how important it is that throughout the whole run you're gonna be using SR40 uh, E3M1 is a perfect place to test this and to basically get used to this mechanic of course you can do this backwards as well and some tricks actually require you to do it backwards but that's all there is to it, to SR40 speedrunning. There's no SR40 in Blood. Unlike, uh, let's say, Duke or Doom or, I think, Shadow Warrior as well. But that's it. So, better get used to it because you're going to be using it a lot throughout the run. Uh, let's move on to another mechanic, which is speed sliding. Or, that's what I like to call it. Um, if you notice how... Some enemies, when you jump over them, or in this case the innocents, they tend to, when you go across their head, they tend to like give you a slight speed boost. And that is because they're trying to throw you off of themselves. It's a weird mechanic. Uh, but this actually can be useful in certain situations and, of course, generally make us go faster. It's not going to be used a whole lot throughout the run but this is something you should know of and it not only works on enemies just show you on E1M1 for example if you do an E1M1 IR with a TNT with the TNT route uh, for example here's this uh, gypped corpse here uh, if you run over it you can see this slight judder I'm actually gaining speed from running over it it's very minimal, but it can make the difference in something as short as an IL. So yeah, keep that in mind. Jibs and enemies, if you run over their heads. For example, here's this guy. Or for example... This tombstone here is actually making me do the same thing. So yeah, keep that in mind. And let's get on with the next mechanic. And I think it's time to d discuss TNT jumping. And the name, also by the way, uh, cheat codes. By default it's T. I have it on P, but by default it's you open up the chat. Uh, impo most important ones are Sport, Griswold, and Montana. So basically you have everything. You have medkit, jump boots, uh, TNT, everything. Anyway, uh, back to TNT jumping, as the name suggests. You throw a TNT under yourself, and just a, just as soon as it lands, you jump. And this cylinder, because TNT works a little bit different other to other ref retro FPS games, let's say uh, Quake. Uh, or Doom or anything like that. It's just a, an expanding sphere, basically. Uh, and of course this makes us go higher. Not just higher, sometimes we just need the speed as well to, let's say, bridge gaps. For example, Great Temple Skip that we're gonna learn about in the next part. And of course you can... Uh, you can... Uh, use multiple TNTs actually and use their combined power. Unfortunately, that's a sector there. You can use their combined power to give you even more speed, as you can see. It's crazy. And you can also use it combined with jump boots. Speaking of jump boots, 
Let's talk about jump boot mechanics. So, jump boots are a really useful tool tool for speedrunning blood. Not only does it give you a bigger height for your jumps, but it also cancels your fall damage completely. It also cancels crushing damage. For example, in E3M6, you don't get crushed by the, the crushers in one of the clips that we're going to be using. And it also lowers fire resistance. I mean, sorry. Uh, your fire resistance goes up. So, let me just type in. Because I ran out of jump boot juice. Uh, so here I'm going to be throwing this TNT at the wall. Look how less damage I take uh, from the wall. Actually, let's do this. Give this a fair chance. So, this is without the jump boots turned on and this is with the jump boots turned on and as you can see i took nine hp damage less and this can be actually a deciding factor where in some episodes uh hp management is really crucial for example episode three or if you like to run a tightrope uh, with your hp management and you go for world records uh, and I think, is that all the jump boot mechanics? So, you don't get crushed, you take well, way less fall damage, of course you get the bigger height, uh, and the fire resistance. There's a glitch though that I haven't talked about with the jump boots, which we're gonna get to now. So if you end levels with the jump boots turned on, uh, there's an interesting mechanic, because you end the level, and uh, after you've uh, entered the next level, you can turn it off. Uh, and the thing is, uh, when the jump boots now in this state, when it's active, it loses its ability to cancel the fall damage or cancel the crushing damage, and you have less explosive resistance. So this should be avoided oh in most cases. Thank you, Caleb, for talking over me. Um, this should be avoided in most cases, except in levels like this one, which is E3-6. Um, uh, in this situation, we it is actually useful to have the glitch, the glitch boots state. Uh, there's a dynamite jump we actually do off of this dam. And also here... As you can see, I took I take way less damage than if I regu regularly would have. And for this damn jump, dynamite jump here, uh, jump boots is basically not necessary. And at this point of the run in episode three, you would be running low on jump boots durability. So it's actually pretty useful to have it turned off. Well, shoot, I didn't make it. I didn't practice that before I start doing episode 3. Anyway, I think I've covered everything that you need to know about uh, the jump boots and the glitch boot state. So let's move on to something else. Uh, I'm gonna leave uh, clipping for last. Let's move on to ho the holster trick. So the holster trick is actually uh, useful for taking down uh, bigger enemies like this uh, stone gargoyle here uh, and it's most useful with the shotgun basically uh, the mechanic is basically the fact that okay please shut up <laughs> so basically um, the shotgun has a reloading animation and if you use a holstering uh, Default key is H, I believe. If you holster your shotgun and then pick it back up again, the reloading animation is cancelled. So let me just show you real quick. So this is normal shooting. Let's try to take this stone guard wall down. So this is gonna take a while. Because he's pretty tanky. But yeah. Let's see how early. We're going to end the level. 1 minute and 10 seconds is what it took. Now let's see with the holster trick, how quickly we can do it. As you can see, it's way, way quicker. 
Yeah. Sleep, Ophelia. Now, of course, he would be using the guns akimbo in this situation, but <laughs> I saved more than 20 seconds in that situation. And in Cerberus, this is going to be true where I think, yeah, on Cerberus, we're going to be using the shotgun to finish him off. And this is a technique that saves a lot of time on these two bosses, specifically the, the Stone Gargoyle in Episode 1 and Cerberus at the end of Episode 3. Alright, and of course I've saved the best one for last, which is this door clipping. Uh, so if... You can clip through doors, and I think this applies to walls, basically. If they're... Because it doesn't only apply to doors, it applies to other things as well. It can apply to walls as well, in certain situations. If there is a thin sector uh, in front of a wall, and if you run into that thin sector with some speed, you can actually clip to the other side of that wall. So, this is uh, one of the first door clips that you're going to run into in the game, which is uh, E1M4, Dark Carnival, because this saves uh, a lot of time, I think. In Fresh Supply, it takes more than a minute. Well, the old rab used to take more than a minute to finish the run, but here you just finish the run, uh, the level in like 30 seconds. All you have to do is run into the wall and uh, basically just strafe at an angle. Sometimes you don't hit it. It's a little bit of a uh, hit or miss trick, unfortunately. Let's save here so it works, hopefully. Okay, doesn't want to work. Wait, there we go. Alright, so. It's a little bit of a hit and miss trick. I would say it's human RNG. Also, you don't have to do it uh, facing into the angle, basically, this thin sector. You can do it from the back as well, like ass to the wall, as you can see. But yeah, this is one of the... Uh, one of those uh, speed tech mechanics that is a little bit of a hit and miss and requires uh, a lot of muscle memory, I would say, and a lot of uh, picture memory as well, because sometimes you just want to line them up. For example, here, maybe this can be lined up. If I stand here on the edge, up here, yeah, I've almost managed to line it up, but... And another form of clipping is sector over sector clipping. For example, here we perform a sector over sector clipping in episode 2 on this door. Because uh, basically there's a sector under us and by clipping into the door, we actually clip downwards. I think it's only possible to clip down, I'm not sure about up. I think it's only possible to clip down. But here I'm going to show you real quick. And I'm down here. Makes the level extra quick. So yeah, uh, there's going to be a few spots where you're going to be using it. Notably, be this level here and uh, E2M2 if you want to use the gargoyle skip. We'll get to that, Jesus. But I think that's all. Uh, I think I've covered every speak tech there is in the game. So let me just look through my notes real quick if I've missed anything. Yeah, that's it. Alright. So that's basically the speed tech tutorial of Blood for You. Uh, next episode, we're going to be tackling uh, episode one, and I hope to see you there. But until then, keep practicing, try out all these mechanics, and have fun, most importantly. And yeah.